Hey guys, surprise, it's not Mr. Siski. Today you have Mrs. Siski. Now you can call me Mama Siski because I am Mr. Siski's mom. And I'm doing this video today because I miss teaching math actually. I used to teach math. I taught algebra. I retired about five years ago. And I love the unit you're in. I love teaching about the FOIL method. And that's what this video is going to be about today is the FOIL method. So I've included here a few pictures of Mr. Siski and me. You can see that I'm a math nerd. Um, have my Pi Day shirt. And apparently Mr. Siski and I only do pictures on Christmas because those are two different Christmas pictures of us. So like I said today, today I'm gonna to teach you how to multiply two binomials using the FOIL method. So if you will get out your notebooks and take some notes on this. And remember, since it's a video, you can pause you can, um, you know, it's turn the volume up. You can rewind. You can watch this over again if it doesn't make sense. Also, for um, your patience and for allowing me to have the opportunity to do this video, I've included a few uh, surprises as we go along. I'm going to show you some pictures of Mr. Siski as he was going through school. So, we'll start with the FOIL method. Um, the FOIL method is a fancy way of multiplying two binomials. Remember, binomials have two terms, and since these two terms are side by side, we know we're multiplying them. The FOIL method was supposed to be something to make this process easier. And I say supposed to be because I think the way I do it, and I think the way Mr. Siski has taught you to do it is a little bit easier. But because it's called the FOIL method, in every math class across every school, we need to call it that, but we're going to really just do a double distributive method. So the reason it's called FOIL is because they want us to multiply the first term in the first parentheses by the first term in the second parentheses. That's first times first. And then they want us to multiply the two outer terms together. So the ones that are on the outer edges of the problem. And then they want us to multiply the inside terms together, the two that are on the innermost part of the problem. And then the last term in the first parentheses times the last term in the second parentheses. To me, that was confusing as a student. So I, even though I call it the FOIL method, when I'm working these problems, I really just think of it as being the distributive property because the distributive property was something that I thought was pretty easy. So I'm going to erase all this because I think that's just a little, I don't know, distracting. So I'm going to erase all that and I'm just going to show you the way I like to do this. I like to first pretend that I'm not even looking at part of the problem. For example, in this problem, I'm going to cover up the plus four. And I'm going to think of this as just multiplying the 3x times the 2x. When I multiply those together, remember I multiply the coefficients, 3 times 2 is 6. And when I multiply the x times x, remember there's a little invisible 1 there, and I add the exponents, I get 6x squared. Now I'm going to distribute the 3x to the 5. 3 times 5 is going to give me a positive 15, so I'm going to put plus 15. My x didn't get multiplied by anything over here, so I'm just going to carry it over. So, so far I have 6x squared plus 15x because I distributed the 3x. Now I'm going to forget about that 3x, and I'm going to multiply, like I'm distributing, by a positive 4. So I'm going to multiply positive 4 times 2x. That's going to give me a positive 8x. And then I'm going to multiply this 4 times 5. That's going to give me a positive 20. What I just did here was exactly what I had before and erased what they called the FOIL method. So we're really doing the FOIL method, but we're thinking of it as doing a double distributive property. We're not finished yet because we have like terms that can be combined. 
So my 6x squared doesn't have anything else that can combine with it, so I'll bring down 6x squared. Now I'm going to combine my positive 15x with my positive 8x, and that's going to give me a positive 23x. And then my 20 is a constant. I don't have any other constants to combine it with. So I'm just going to bring it down. So my final answer is this trinomial, 6x squared plus 23x plus 20. And if you will bear with me after every problem, I'll give you a sneak peek into Keenan's educational life. I mean, Mr. Siski's. So the first picture you see here of the little boy and the little girl, that is Mr. Siski on his first day of kindergarten. He has a Pokemon backpack, by the way. He was a little nervous. Um, that's his little sister there. She was very upset that she couldn't go to school um, and crying. So she's a little sad looking there. Uh, and while I'm mentioning Jennifer, that's his sister's name. Let me introduce you to the rest of the family. You see Mr. Siski there on the right. And then there's me, Mama Siski. Uh, Grandma Siski's in the middle. That's my mom. And then there's grown-up Jennifer. Um, she's the little girl over there on the side that's crying. And then there's Daddy Siski. So those are the Siskis. Okay, for this next problem. We are going to do the formal method. But again, I'm going to think of it as doing a double distributive. I'm going to just kind of cover up that plus five for a second. And I'm going to multiply, and this time I'm not going to use different colored ink. I'm just going to multiply the x times x. Remember there's a one for our coefficient. One times one is one. I don't necessarily need to write it. And x times x is x squared. So there's one x squared. And then I'm going to multiply the one x times, this time I'm multiplying it by a negative seven. This sign matters. It's a positive x times a negative 7, and that gives me a negative 7x. Now I'm going to, since I've distributed the 1x to everything I can, I'm going to distribute this positive 5. And I'm just going underneath because it's just a little bit less messy. 5 times 1 is 5. And since there's an x there and I didn't have to multiply it by anything, it's 5x. And now I'm multiplying 5 times a negative 7. Remember, we have this negative here that I've pretty much written all over top of. But that 5 times negative 7 is negative 35. And we're not finished. I'm going to kind of give you a heads up on this. Most of these binomials, when you multiply them, you're going to get a trinomial. So always look for combining like terms. And the like terms that I'm going to combine are these two in the middle, the x's. And that's going to happen again on most problems. When I combine a negative 7x with a positive 5x, I get negative 2x. And then the negative 35 just comes down. This little gem is Mr. Siski right before 8th grade dance. I have no words. Okay, and our last problem... The only thing I did here was just threw in several different signs um, just to make it so you can understand how important the signs are when you're multiplying that you consider what sign is in front of the, the coefficient. So I'm going to, again, pretend that I'm distributing. I'm going to multiply this negative 3x times 2x. That's going to give me a negative 6x squared. To multiply negative 3x times negative 3. This time I'm not going to circle it. That's a negative 3. A negative times a negative would be a positive 9x. And then I'm finished with distributing the negative 3x. I'm going to move on to distributing negative 4. Now notice I picked up this negative sign here. So this negative 4 times 2x is going to be negative 8x. And now I'm multiplying a negative 4 times a negative 3. Negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12. And then again, I'm combining like terms. A positive 9x and a negative 8x is going to give you a positive 1x plus 12. And you've seen the picture of Keenan, Mr. Siskis. That's so hard for me to say. Mr. Siskis, first day of kindergarten, 
and then his eighth grade dance. Now this is his senior year. Um, and that's our dog Sawyer that we just lost in September. So that makes me really sad. But there's Mr. Siski, his senior year. So he was probably 18 there. I just think he gets cuter. Maybe I'm just partial. Anyway, so that is how to do the foil method. Um, again, it's first outer, inner, last, but really it's just a double distributive property. I hope to see you in person sometime soon. Thanks.